And we're coming to you live from the Bill Ford Tough Studio. Boomer Esiason, Greg Giannotti. It's Boomer and Geo on the fan. Simulcast across the country on CBS Sports Network. And wherever you are on the free Odyssey app, good Thursday morning. It is a complete bleep show out on the roads. Every moron who drives in in the rain doesn't know how to drive in in the rain. And every single goddamn time it rains. There are accidents on every road coming into the city from Long Island. Several on the LIE. There's an hour backed up there. Cross Island. There's another one on the Kosciuszko. Nobody knows how to drive. I got here about four minutes ago. But as I have learned in my ripe old age of 41, soon to be 42, that this doesn't just happen to me. It happens to everybody out there. And and I am just one of many who wanted to get out of their car and lay in the road and hope Mm -hmm. that someone ran them over (laughs) at a high speed. So we're going to turn this thing around. (laughs) Now you say, oh, here it comes. He's always all fired up. I mean, I can sit here and scream and yell about this stuff like I've done in the past, and I'll get it off my chest at some point. But we are here. We are here (laughs) to make our listeners happy. Yes. We are here to show them that no matter what's going on out there, that we can have a good time. So I, I, I am, I am, as I told you the other day, I'm trying, I'm trying my hardest to turn over a new leaf and not have everything in my life ruined by a two-hour traffic nightmare coming in. So we'll see how long it lasts. We'll see how long it lasts. We do have some positive sports stuff to get to. We will get to all of that. But this morning was one of those times I was looking around going, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why? And then I get here and I see everybody and I know why. Because we got the greatest job in the world. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Uh, Good morning, Gio. I'm doing much better than you. Uh, I have been in that situation many a time. And everybody in their car this morning listening mm -hmm. to us has been in that. And they are in that situation. And we're going to make them feel better. We're going to. I want you to go back 45 minutes. And and kind of relive a little bit of what you were feeling at that moment, that not in your stomach, that you're not sure whether or not you're going to get here on time and you're getting pissed off and everything else. So all of those people that are out there doing that right now, we need to get them through this. Yes. That is our job. That's what we do. Now, here's the thing. You don't. I guess you do remember this. You remember when the Kosciuszko Bridge was under construction? Well, I mean, it it, it is. Well, not now. The, the Williamsburg Bridge is under construction now every day I go home. But, yes, the Kosciuszko was under construction for years and years well, and years. Well, they built a new one. Yeah. They mm-hmm. basically they built two They blew up the ones. other one and built a new one. And they built two of them, actually, yeah. uh-huh. next to each other. And uh, driving through that for all those years was an absolute unmitigated nightmare. That was brutal. Mm -hmm. And now, yes, driving home on the Williamsburg Bridge is no fun. I mean, there's about a foot on each side of your car to get over the bridge before you're scraping off the rust of the bridge. Although the rust isn't nearly as bad as the rust on the Jersey bridges. Uh, Just just so we're clear about that. Uh, But I will say, look, you got here. You're home. Uh-huh. And I was just wondering what you were going to start the show with. I didn't really know. Um, and I'm sure other people around here are wondering what you're going to start the show with and where you were going to go, but I'm not really sure. Uh, so I, I figure we got to get through the traffic uh, snarl. We got to get through the yes. aggravation that that brings. Mm. And uh, and then we'll settle in. And I'm sure we'll talk a lot about the Yankees. I'm sure we'll talk a lot about the Mets. Yeah. I had my old man moment last night. I just wanted Another to Another one. Yeah, I was getting very frustrated because I was trying to find the goddamn Yankee game. Oh, Amazon, yeah. Yes, and it was on Amazon Prime, and I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it, right? So, you know, I have Fubo, and yes, carries Fubo. I mean, uh, Fubo carries yes, and I'm looking for it on Fubo. No luck. Uh, and then I'm like, man, on Apple Plus, no luck. Yeah. And I'm like, so then I Google, where is the Yankee game being televised tonight? And... Uh, it says Fubo. It says yes. It says FS1. I mean, there are 97 different channels throughout the entire season. And there was one website that I found that I didn't go to Yes Network. I did not go to the Yankees.com. I found a website. It was like a cable guy. And it was where the Yankees are playing every single game this season, scheduled to be playing on television. And I finally found it, and it was Amazon Prime. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I mean, and I'm like, you you know, and I'm not a Yankee fan. (laughs) (laughs) That's my favorite. 
felt. That's how I felt last night. Yep. I didn't get there until the fifth inning. I'm, I'm, there's a no hitter going on. I'm trying to get to it. Like, where the F is it? I'm, I, wa- I'm, watching, I'm watching it on ESPN.com. Mm. I'm not watching that show game. I'm just watching that game cast thing. You're, you're better than this, though, I man. Know like I that, am. that, I know. that I just app, wasn't paying attention. That app situation with Air Canada or United or whatever, I mean, that was a little tricky. Yes. Uh, but we figured it out. Something like this you should be better with. I mean, I, I, you, honestly, I, I, you know, I came off the Met game. Okay, they swept the Nationals. Felt pretty good. Was going to go to the Yankee game. And – you know, I was cooking dinner, and all of a sudden, I turn on the uh, the iPad, and I'm like, "Oh, that's right, the Yankees are playing. Where are they?" And I'm trying to find them, and I, I literally it took me ten minutes to find them. And I, I was thinking of you, thinking of me, yeah, uh, and that I old that man you, technology spot. But it, it really wasn't because I have all the technology. It was mm-hmm. a question of finding where it was. Yeah, and I that's mean, that's why I Google where where are the Yankees playing tonight on TV, and it. It gave me the list of FS1, Yes, Fubo. So I went to Fubo. It was not on Yes because Yes was not broadcasting any, or they had a Yankeeography or something. But I don't know. It was, you it know, was, all it was you have to nuts. do is go to the CBS Sports app, and it's got it right there on you know what channel it is on. If it's something like, I mean, it, it's. Just, I, I went to ESPN. They didn't have it. Well, they, CBS they, Sports, man, come on. All right, I will. I will. From now on, I will. Like, like for example, if you go to today. Yeah, but that was today. Like, so in other words, yesterday. Hmm. If you go, not yesterday, if you go the day before yesterday, they'll list on the ESPN where they're being shown. Okay. Uh, but the day of, for some reason, they don't, they take it down or something. I, I, again, my mistake probably. I apologize. User error, most, uh, most likely. But the point being is that I, I'm not a Yankee fan. I told you that a thousand times. And I, I saw that there was a no-hitter going. I wanted, I wanted to check in on it. And it just, it took me 10 minutes. Does a no-hitter still get you going? Oh, yeah, yes. Does it? Yes, 100%. Especially when it's not a combined no-hitter. Maybe I want to see, maybe if uh, Luis Heal is on the mound and he gets to, like, inning number seven and he's got a no-hitter, he gets all the way through seven and he's only thrown 82 pitches. But the Yankees have had, I mean, a perfect game is a perfect game, which which is an amazing feat. But, I mean, the Yankees have had a ton of perfect games. They've had no hitters. You know, the the Mets had the one controversial no hitter, uh, and then a combined no hitter. So if they if they actually had a real no hitter, I think that would do something for me. But like every other one, it's just like eh, no, not now. for me. I mean, you know, eh. I'm old school, G. You That's are old I school. Am. And uh, when I see something that I I believe is is a very is a standout performance, and by the way, collectively the Yankees are having are in the midst of a standout performance. And uh, it's it's amazing just watching them play baseball from the defense to uh, to the big hits to the home runs to the doubles uh, to stolen bases to lugging out doubles to triples with uh, Volpe. I mean they are they are rolling. And you know and by the way credit to, goes to uh, the Baltimore Orioles because they're hanging right in there with them. Uh, yes, they are, and that team is this is going to be a battle the entire <laughs> season. These are two very good teams, of course, and. I mean, I I don't I know that Jerry Jerry is out today, and I know Jerry has been locked into everything with the the Mets, and we know the Yankees are going to be there the in, entire year, uh, and we'll make the playoffs. But like the Mets having swept this series, now having a couple of days off and going to London, and oh, they're boy. now they're now eight games under. I was I was curious, and I didn't know Jerry was out today. I was I was excited to ask him. Like, is he now believing again that they're going to get back and, and win this bet? Or is he just like, no, this is just this is just a tease. Now, the bet, for if people don't know, it's uh, 81 and a half. And they had to go 82 and 80 for him to win his bet. Now, they went from, what, 11 games under to 8 games under. And it's not like the Nationals are any good. But after the Phillies in London, they come back and then they've got the Marlins. For three, yeah, so okay. if if they're going to if they're going to make a move for that five hundred uh, and and get back into a conversation, this this might be a time to do it for them. I mean, I think that they're they're dead, and this is just a ups and downs. There's going to be way more downs than ups for them. Uh, but if you're Jerry and you're trying to be positive, or you're you you didn't put money on it, but you thought that they would go over eighty one and a half as well. I mean, this is one of those times where you're thinking, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe we're, we're piecing something together after this players right. only meeting. So you have Luis Torrens hitting two home runs yesterday. You have Francisco Lindor heating up over the last couple of weeks since they had their players only meeting. Yeah. So credit to him for all of that. But let's face it, 
Washington is right where the Mets are in terms of the the team, the roster. They have no hope for anything. But now the Mets are three and a half out of a wild card, which to me is the dangerous aspect of all of this. Dangerous. If, well, if you think that the Mets are going to try to reconfigure this team, they're not going to. They're not going to buy at the trade deadline. If Don't worry think, about but, it. But if they are close, if they are within a game, or if somehow, some way, I, I look, they, they, I looked at their schedule. So we'll find out how they are against Philadelphia. It's two games in London. Let's see if they can split with them. Uh, and then they come home, and then they have the Marlins. You said then it's San Diego, Texas, Cubs, Yankees. So that it's not, I mean, where's the soft underbelly of the schedule? Well, it was the Nationals and then the Marlins. <laughs> I mean, basically, that, with, that with is it Phillies with the Phillies in with between. The, with the Phillies in between with yeah. them having to go to London. Right, right, exactly. So, what is the over-under, by the way, on the FanDuel Sportsbook for home runs in London with these two teams? I don't think that they have that bet. Was it, like, didn't the Red Sox and the Yankees hit, like, an inordinate amount of home runs over there or something? Was it yes, something it was like, like every flying. game was, like, 17 to 14. Yeah, there was all sorts of crazy offense that was... That was going on. So, yes, I mean, I don't know if that same thing is going to happen. I don't know if they did that. Like, I'm I'm all for the conspiracy theory that the balls are juiced in certain situations. And I think because the because MLP was going over there for the first time playing those games in London, I think they sent the, the juiced balls over there to make it be like, hey, look at this. This game isn't so boring. It's 17 to 15, and we're hitting home runs. And maybe this is something that you would like. You think the cricket balls are uh, juiced out there in Nassau County? They could be. They could be. I don't know, but I see I don't know enough about that sport. Uh, there's one guy who's been trying to teach me about it. He's a huge cricket guy. It's just a very, very complicated thing. So I don't know if a juiced cricket ball is something that helps or hurts the sport. I don't know. So you remember uh, on Sunday I took uh, Winnie and Matt for a ride down Jones Beach. Yeah. Right? So a bike ride down there. And um, I met a very nice man who was walking in that Cedar Creek Park down in Seaford. And uh, he happened to be of Indian persuasion. and uh, I Persuasion? Was, yeah. So he was walking. He was visiting New York specifically mm-hmm. for the cricket matches. Okay. And he was giving me the lowdown on the cricket matches in Nassau County. Okay. I got some inside knowledge. I also have some inside knowledge within the office here. Some more office scuttlebutt, which you have been very lax on lately. And people realize that there's something going on with you. And uh, you're not meandering as much in the Bangladesh call center out there, getting information that needs to be uh, brought forth and uh, discussed. Well, I mean, it's summertime, man. You know, we once you hit Memorial Day weekend and it's and it's summertime, the, the scuttlebutt is not as important to me. It's just not like I need it in the winter to like keep me going because there's nothing else going on. Like now I'm just like, hey, man, we got we got a lot of fun stuff to do. You know, we've got all this this great weather. I mean, I'm not as into the scuttlebutt, but I, I but it's interesting. I'd love I'd love to know. You want to give me just a little bit of a hint? Yeah, there's a, been a big fight for windowed offices. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I actually see. I know. Fight. So I know mm. I know about what's going on back there. Oh, now you know. All but I don't I don't know. Well, I know, but I didn't. It, to me, it wasn't interesting that they were moving salespeople around. Um, but. I guess that what I didn't know is there was fights between. Well, you know, you know, people want light in their office. Yeah. There's some people that were in offices that didn't have any windows. For the one day a week that they're here. Yeah, I yeah. Guess. yeah exactly. They need that window. Right. <laughs> I think the one guy is here a little bit more than that who got the new office, one of the new offices. Is that Sean Argerman? Yes. Yeah. He I got f- one of the new offices. Yeah, I told you. I, I mean, I'm on it. I just didn't think, you know, uh, salespeople scuttle, but. Very yeah, rarely I think, is I interesting. Think, I think somebody left and somebody wanted a big corner office with a big window and much like Olivero's office. Okay. Somebody left here and somebody wanted that office and I'm not sure who got it. Okay, well, we'll figure that out and find out who, who ended up getting that office. But as I was discussing this with random people yesterday mm-hmm. around here, yeah, um, I, they had said to me that they are seeing less and less of you. What do you mean? Like, you used to be like one of the people here, like the foundational people here, and they're just not seeing you anymore. They just, they, they, they wave hi to you, but you know, you're not engaging with people. You're not talking to people. That well, is a total lie. Well, if they came to work more than once or twice right, a week, exactly, they right, would but, see him. But by the way, I'm not saying this. Don't look at me. Yeah, I know where me. you're getting it from. I'm, I'm telling you. This is. I know where you're getting it from, yeah, and my I'm answer to that you, person but, would be: be more interesting in a conversation, then I'll talk to you. 
But if you're just going to sit there and show me cats playing the piano on your phone, I'm just I'm not really interested in any of that. So, I don't know who I that. Mean, I don't know. Who so that. like that would be that would be my answer. I like, don't know who that person like I, is. I am very strategic with who I'm going to give my time to in the office. And if you're not interesting to me, then I'm not going to give it to you. So that would be my response to that. Okay. We could play this game if you want. I'm not playing a game. <laughs> we could, we could play this game. I'm not playing a game. I engage plenty back there. Way more than I think the the average talk show host would. I way, way more than me, by the way. Certainly. 100%. Yes. That's right. why I was shocked when I got this scuttlebutt yesterday and you hadn't brought it forth. And then some of the people were saying that, yes, we see less and less in jail, less and less and less. In of no, jail. that's not. That's just not true. This is their perspective, not mine. Yeah. Well, I just felt like, you know, as your partner, I had your back. Mm-hmm. I said, you're living your best life right now. Yeah. Well, I mean. This, the, yeah, I, I don't I don't know how to respond other than I, I talk to plenty of people back there. Okay. I do what I have to do, and the people I avoid, there's a reason why. <laughs> are there are there a lot of people you avoid? Uh, it's, uh, several, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, I think we probably avoid the same amount of people. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you're going to talk and talk and talk to me about absolutely nothing, then I'm not interested. So, like, there's certain people that can, like, know how to be like, hey, this is interesting. This is this could do this or whatever. Like, something that is, for me, useful. If it's not and we're just sucking time out of my life, I'm not interested in it. So that, to me, it's like if you're seeing less and less of me, it's probably on that person who's seeing less and less of me, not me. Okay. Fair. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's because that's your perspective. No, that's the truth. Oh, but that's, because it's but me. From, <laughs> so it's not my perspective. Yeah, but it's from because you. Because if, if I'm the one who's involved in it, it's not a perspective. It's actually the reality because I'm the one making those choices. You understand how that happens? And they recognize that you're making those choices. That's the point. Okay. Well, they understand. What they, would you they, like me to do? I, nothing. All right. I don't want you to do anything. I was just bringing it to your attention. Okay. And I figured this morning would be a good time, especially when I was thinking about you were caught in traffic. And I know how annoying that is. Mm-hmm. And I know what that does to somebody. Yeah. And it takes them a while to come down from the fever pitch that you end up, you know, getting to when you're in the middle of it and you're so frustrated. Especially on a bad weather day. That's yeah. the other thing. I mean, it is a lock every single time it rains, there's an accident. Because there's always one person who feels like, okay, I'm not going to change the way I drive in the rain and I'm just going to be weaving in and out of lanes and I'm going to get into an accident. And then it just backs everything up to the point where today at the LIE was, was a complete and utter nightmare. Now I had to go all the way around, do the whole thing, still got here in time. But, and then yesterday for whatever reason on the way home, took me two hours to get home yesterday. I, I was on Queens Boulevard yesterday. Somehow. Ways, Ways, Ways took you to Queens Boulevard. To oh, Queens you, Boulevard. You know what that's called? That's called a Ways maze. That's, and that's where that's where Waze tries to get you out of the traffic, but it puts you and a thousand other people. I in couldn't even tell you. Traffic. I couldn't even tell you the last time that I was on Queens Boulevard. I'm looking around, going, "God, I forgot this whole area existed." You could have got a butt lift over there. Yeah, I know. You tell me about the yes. butt lifts in Queens on Queens Boulevard. Yeah. I could have. I am as uh, as we talked to Drew Barrymore about. I am uh, every single day of my life, my ass is disappearing. Just a little bit. <laughs> so I might need one of those butt lifts or butt injections or something. Because it is just, I am flat back there now. It's absolutely flat. You got to start doing some, like, uh, Tua squats. Yeah, maybe. I mean, for what at this point, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, if my ass is flat, my ass is flat. Yeah, but you know what? Like, big you, deal. If you. Hey, what, what are we doing? Anyway? If you did some squats, you'd help your golf game. Yeah, I don't. You got to think about it in will that it? regard. Yes. Will it? Yeah. I don't know. Make your base a little bit stronger. Yeah, potentially. Uh, all right, uh, we will get uh, CeeLo in here, who's going to have a uh, update for you, tell you about all the Mets and Yankees stuff. <clears throat> it's Boomer and Geo on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. 